<laughs> Thanks, Coach. <laughs> I guess we're thinking, uh, traveling up to Vancouver. What do, what do you know about the, the Whitecaps? It's like that they're kind of struggling so far this year. You know, Freddie Montero, yep. Rosales. Uh, they got some good players. I mean, look, they put a lot of effort and energy into Champions League, and so that's always deceptive, deceiving, you know, how much energy you put in different competitions uh, where you focused on that versus MLS play. Coaches will tell you that, yeah, you can do both, but there is some subtleties that you have to be aware of. Um, you know, the snow game, I mean, you're going to probably throw that one out, right? Because I don't know how people could play in that. I mean, we saw the snowballing incident. I mean, that was pretty funny. Um, yeah, so they're they're not in a great shape, but it's a dangerous team. Coach, what's, what's Roman Torres' status? Day to day. Is there anything else? You might be able to tell Strained us? hamstring, day to day. What's it going to be like going against you know the club's all-time leading scorer, there, Freddie Montero? Uh, you know, different you know, Freddie's a good guy. Uh, I always had a good relationship with him. I think everybody in the team respects what Freddie's done in his career. So it'll be it'll be interesting. But once the whistle blows, it's you know. It's, it's, he's the enemy. Have you had a chance to talk to him since he signed up there? Uh, before he went up there, we had a little conversation, but not after. Was that leading up to his signing? Did you guys talk about it at all? Well, we just talked about Steph in general because he was in town. Just coffee. How his wife and kids are doing. Stuff like that. What do Carl Robinson's teams feature? What are their characteristics? Well, I always think Carl's a pretty, you know, organized, disciplined coach. You know, they, 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 you know, played some version of a 4 2 3 one similar to us. Um, you know, it's always been always been challenging games, let's put it that way. Not just because it's, you know, good team, good team, but you add on top of that, it's the rivalry game, and, you know, it's always been good. With him not traveling, everybody in that snow game against RSL, do you draw a line through it and look at, look at the Toronto and the L.A. matches? Yeah, we'll try and, again, watch film and get – whatever useful bits of information we can out of each game that they've played and, you know, try and devise a game plan for them. How long did the tie stick with you, uh, that taste? Still, with you? still now. Do you think that's true of the guys as well? Uh, I would say so, because we watched film this morning, so today they're probably not happy, but I, I hope so. Other than the result, what, what part of it has you most upset? What part of those last few minutes? Well, I wouldn't say just the last four minutes upset me. I would say there were certain parts of the game where I felt we were, we were able to impose our will a little bit and try and get a little bit more out of the game, just the one goal off a set piece. That's number one. Number two, it's total concentration. I said this after the game. I mean, MLS games are so tight. The teams are so close that if you don't focus for 90 minutes or 94 minutes, then... It, it, it ends up costing them. So we'll, we'll need to be, you know, away from home. There's very small room margin for error. So when you say they're not focusing, what, what parts are you talking about? How do you know that they're not focusing? Is there anything that shows up in a game? Like well, guys not watching when the ball's coming? No, out you, on that particular play, yeah. look, on that particular play, what happened was is the guy gets down the end line, and the ball gets, the guy's just hitting the ball across the goal. I mean, he's smashing it to, to make something happen. Ball goes between one, two, three, four of our guys and ends up on Wondolowski's foot. So credit Wondolowski for, like, putting himself in that spot. But that play is not kind of something that I'd go, okay, well, whoever let him down at the end line and whoever missed the ball, I, I'm not really irritated about that. But when we're up one nothing with four minutes to go, are we controlling the tempo? That's the question I ask. And we're a little, a little hurried at points. And that's where I think we need to, we're a senior team. We can, hey, let's slow this down. We got this. This is how we're going to close it out. And on that front, when you're in that position, are you looking for somebody to step up? They all step up. Are they all need yeah, step up? I mean, Ozzy had a great game. Chad Marshall did well. Gustav. They all had good games. But at that point, I mean, does somebody need to step up in that point? Well, everybody's well, I think well. They, well, I think they did. Okay. I think they did. It's just, you know, it's a function of, you know, again, you, you're not micromanaging certain plays. You're, the overall group, was it good? When we scored the goal, 
where we organized, where we disciplined, where we focused and concentrated, and were we able to dictate tempo to them so that they don't score. We're talking about all 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah all 11. Cohesiveness Even the coaching staff. What do I do? You know, did I did Dilem come in? Should I put Tony in? I mean, we self-reflect as well. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we think about. We watch a tape and then say, okay, what what could we have done better to help the guys seal that victory? Did the game on Friday? Sorry, when do we start moving forward? Today. After after that film. Did the field conditions have anything to do with it? It seemed like the, no. all the players were slipping all around. No. <clears throat> it was a great field. It's a great field. What was your reaction to Nico's goal, and were in, when you were able to see it on, on replay? It's pretty good, better in replay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when we're on the field, we're just like hoping it. You just kind of go, <laughs> and then it went in. It's a pretty good goal. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between the Portland Seattle rivalry and the Seattle Vancouver rivalry? Vancouver in that A League and USL era was very a high quality side, um, versus Portland was more of a fierce fan rivalry. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, you could say that maybe the soccer is a little different than the two cities competing against each other, the two fan bases. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's there's been some... Look, I've told a Zach Scott story about when we had that one preseason game where Zach got a red card in the first three minutes. I mean, there's been some heated games against Vancouver as well. Um, you know, I think everything is kind of cyclical. I mean, the, the Whitecaps have been up, and then they come down, Portland up, down, we up, down. I mean, it's, it's been cyclical. Right now, you know, Portland won in 2015, we won in 16. You know, maybe that has something to do with it. I mean, we're going we're gonna to get Vancouver's best effort, though. I, I, can, I can guarantee you that. It seems as though Kakuda sort of always saved his best for you guys <laughs> over the last couple of years. Yeah, like, like Wondolowski. A little bit like one last week. Uh, whenever you look at the team sheets on Friday, I mean, are you gonna? Is there any relief that he's not gonna be over there, given how he has sort of? Well, he's he's there. certainly a good player, but it, again, it's a team game, and Carl has a lot of different weapons. So, I mean, whatever the whatever decision was made, that's their decision. How do you think it changes what they do not having him as an option? Uh, well. I mean, you know, they, they might play a little more possession because he's an out-and-out -out speed guy, but they still got some fast guys on the team. I mean, they, they, they still do, so it, it won't change them that much. Uh, you know, sometimes when you lose a player, coaches are, you know, just trying to look for something. You know, maybe there was a contract issue that I'm, that I'm unaware of. I mean, I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. What's your thoughts on the 16-year-old Davies? Good. Playing against he's a fast guy. That age. Yeah. Davies is pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so, you know, they, they'll still play somewhere. Yeah. Coach, speaking of uh, the Vancouver rivalry, last year's match in Vancouver finished 10 aside. How are, as a coach, what are the challenges of getting your guys ready for such a big rivalry match, making sure they're amped up, but also playing with the composure you talked about last year? Uh, you're talking about the one where Brad kind of yeah, semi tried to. Yeah. Christian. Well, that was a one off. I mean, Brad was not trying to headbutt him. So, I mean, he was, you know, trying to get out of my face and maybe it was a little too violent. But, you know, again, referees have a hard job, so we're, we're way past that. You probably saw uh, where the referee from last weekend called out Jordan for honestly correcting him on the corner kick. Did that surprise you at all to hear that? Uh, no, it didn't surprise me. That's something that He's such a nice kid. He's such a nice kid. Is that a trade you want as a striker as a coach? Or? If Jordan scores a few more goals than he did last year, plays like he did last year, and continues to be a nice kid, I will be happy. Uh, when, when Roman went down to consideration, the stage that it was on, did your heart stop for a second? Were you really worried? And no, we kind of knew he was, he was kind of going like this earlier before we pulled him. And with him being out, are you pretty comfortable with the subs you have in and kind of the chemistry they build up? Tony's next guy up, Gustav's next guy up. We'll miss Roman, but next guy steps up.